Two Worlds, One Family by Dragon Translator Chapter 51 You Are Stuck With Me Hiccup looked up as Stormfly screeched and landed near the cove's pond. He hung back while Astra dismounted and Stormfly greeted Toothless and Sharpshot. Astrid had said they needed to talk. Given her neutral response on the way home, Hiccup feared he would not like this conversation. Gida had said he would not survive if Astrid died on the rescue mission. She was right. Hiccup also knew he would not survive if he lost Astrid to something as stupid as unknown feelings distracting him to the point he annoyed her. Gida had said they were normal, but Hiccup doubted her. They succeeded in making Astrid mad at him, and Hiccup wanted to bash his head against the wall of his house to rid himself of them. He wanted nothing that would make Astrid mad at him. Since the Red Death, she had listened to him. Since he awoke, she aided him. Since Gida's return and their memories being unblocked, she had kept her promise in Gida's house and stuck by him. Since their courtship began, she had proved over and over she welcomed his company and allowed him to kiss her. She kissed him. She let him hold her. Hiccup didn't want any of that to stop because of unknown feelings, caused him to freeze at the thought of her dying and thus aggravate her. She was a capable warrior. She probably thought it beneath her to have someone like Hiccup worried about her. A small part of him screamed in protest. Hiccup was not sure if it was his terror that she would think that, or his soul rejecting the idea of doubting her. Hiccup? Astrid's voice pulled his gaze from where it had fallen to the ground, up to her face. Hiccup winced at finding her brow furrowed. He had worried her. His inability to return to the Hiccup before that kiss to forget these weird and unknown feelings had caused Astrid to stare at him as if he would start yelling and screaming madly at any moment. Hiccup slumped to the ground, head in his hands. He must look a right pathetic sight. He briefly wondered if the next sound he would hear would be Astrid directing Stormfly to get her away from the weak Viking. The sound he heard was not a dragon taking off. Far from it. He heard running feet and then a shuffle before he felt himself enclosed in a warm embrace. He was pulled against something equally warm I felt hands beginning to knead into his back. What's wrong, Hiccup? I'm sorry, he whispered. For what? He tried to stand up, to put some distance between them. She refused to let go. Please, tell me what's wrong. Hiccup slumped once more. He sighed. She would not let him go, and she would not leave it alone until she had her answers. I know I annoyed you, Hiccup whispered. The mighty Astrid has the smallest Viking ever worried about her. Astrid grunted. Hiccup, she began softly. Is this about your reaction to me telling Gita to go and do something else on Outcast Island? Hiccup hissed, echoes of his fear and his desire to yank her off that nadder's back blasting him. Hiccup? I was scared, he whispered. I know, Vikings are fearless and you're the bravest of all of us. But I was terrified. Anything could have happened. Knowing that you didn't have Gida backing you. I wanted to yank you off that nadder's back and hold you. I wanted Toothless to fly us far away. I wanted you safe. I couldn't. You're Astrid. I'm just me. I have no right to stop you fighting. I have no right to make you follow one plan and one plan only. I have no right to pull you into my arms and out of danger. He felt Astrid's arms tighten and pulling him closer towards her. She buried her face into his neck and began kissing whatever skin she could reach. Hiccup moaned, then froze again. Astrid lifted her head. Hiccup winced at seeing her frowning, 
Sorry, he whispered, closing his eyes. Ever since you kissed me on that sea stack, everything has become more... More what? More, Hiccup said, helpless to make himself any clearer. The fear, the worry, the urges to hold you, to kiss you, to run my fingers through your hair. Everything. More. Something is wrong with me. I know Gita said this was normal, but how can it be? I got distracted when you looked at Stormfly while sitting in my lap. I couldn't focus. We were planning a mission and you could have been killed on it, but I couldn't stop looking at your neck. So? Hiccup's eyes opened and he stared at Astrid as if she had two heads. I should have been focused on the planning, not my urge to kiss your neck. Astrid's brow furrowed. Hiccup felt his heart fall as her nostrils flared. She stared at him in silence for a long moment. She released him. Hiccup tensed to move away, certain that now she would get on Stormfly and leave. He blinked when she framed his face with her hands and gently made him face her fully. Hiccup kept his gaze averted. Look at me. Please. Sorry, there are a lot of people downstairs. Hiccup did, unable to deny her request. He wanted to kick himself. He could see tears in her eyes. She should not be crying. Not because of him. Her thumbs began to caress his cheeks. I know you won't really believe me when I say this, she began softly. I know your father will have to correct this, because he's at fault for it. But nothing is wrong with you, Hiccup. But... No, please, let me finish. Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing. I can't explain all of what you're feeling and thinking, because that's something your dad has to do. And he will. Trust me, he will. But just know this. I am not mad at you for anything. I know changing the plan would have worried you, and I'm sorry for that. I know you want all the people and dragons you care about safe, and you worry when they are not. There's nothing wrong with that. Just as there's nothing wrong with wanting to kiss my neck, or hold me, or run your fingers through my hair. And, for the record, you have every right to pull me out of danger and hold me. Hiccup felt tension ease out of him. He still was unsure, but hearing her say that she was not mad at him calmed him. He smiled at her, and she returned the smile. Please, sit down, she whispered. He frowned, but did as she asked. His eyes widened when she sat in his lap, back against the rock beside him. She reached up, caressed his left cheek with her fingers. Hiccup's eyes closed as the fingertips continued on, circling around his neck. His eyes popped open when Astrid kissed him. It quickly became the same as on the sea stack. Hiccup moaned, yanking her closer. His other arm joined the first around his neck. Her lips devoured his. His chest screamed with want of air. He ignored it. The feelings rushed him. He held on to Astrid as if she was the only stable thing around. He returned the kiss, trying to match her trying to devour her lips, her breath as well. Something squawked into his right ear. He jumped back. Sharpshot looked down from the top of the rock, chuffed and shook his head. Toothless walked over. He curled around behind Hiccup and nosed his muzzle into Astrid's lap. That caused Astrid to sit back from Hiccup, though not out of his lap. Stormfly sat down beside Astrid and purposefully began to groom Astrid's hair, straightening what was not in a braid, and had gotten mussed by Hiccup's hand. Astrid grunted and reached over to Vilissa's muzzle to caress Hiccup's cheek. You are the bravest of us all, Hiccup, Astrid whispered. Hiccup tilted his head, eyebrow lifted. When she stayed with us, Gida and I talked about many things. She said that being brave wasn't the absence of fear. It was feeling fear and still going forward. You have done that, 
your entire life, Hiccup. You are the bravest of us all. I am not going anywhere. You are stuck with me now, Dragon Boy. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that. I think they both needed that. This is what I mean by their communication. They are perfect for each other in so many ways. It is gorgeous. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys, and all binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.